All right, we are now on BP6. So we're going to turn a motor on after a bump switch is pressed. So this is going to be uh, significantly different. So I'm going to do a save as. We're going to call this BP6. And we're going to actually get rid of all the pseudocode from our last one. And we're going to get rid of basically everything here as well. We're going to basically re restart our program um, because this is again significantly different than anything we've done so here's BP6 and we've got task main open curly close curly so now what we want to happen is we want the motor to be turned off while what that's kind of what we need to be thinking to ourselves is while what and I'm gonna go into here. So while, I'm gonna kinda of do some pseudocoding first. So while the bump switch is not pressed. What is happening while the bump switch is not pressed? Most people would say nothing. Well, really not nothing. A better description is that we should be checking the sensor is what's happening. So how do we check the sensor? Well, it automatically checks a sensor when you have a while loop. So first of all, how do you get a sensor to be checked? So if you go under sensors and variables, there is a function that's called sensor value. And this is a critical function. Um, it allows us to grab the value of a sensor. And we put the sensor name in the brackets. And now we can say while the bump switch is not pressed. And we can essentially put nothing in this while loop. And that's okay. Because if we think about it, currently my bump switch is not pressed. So it's going to stay in this while loop and come and check it again. And check it, and check it, and check it, and check it. So it's going to keep checking this bump switch over and over and over and over and over again until I press that button. So if I went ahead and downloaded to a robot, and I hit start, it's going to just, it's going to pretend like it's doing nothing. Like the motors aren't on, nothing's happening, but it's still running. You can see that it's running because it, it says stop. I could manually stop it, but watch what happens when my bump switch goes from a zero to a one. Watch what happens up here in the debug status. You ready? So here it goes. Three, two, one, push the button. And when I did that, it went to a one value it kicked out of the while loop and it moved on in the code in this case just into the program. So this will hold until you basically push the button. So this is great for doing start switches or start buttons on your program. You don't want your motors to start moving until you press the start button. So this acts as a start button press. Uh, what I would encourage you to do though is add a wait time. I would add a wait in milliseconds, and even if it's like a 50 millisecond wait, this will help your processor. So it's not sitting there going check, 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 check. It's going check, wait, check, wait, check, wait, check, wait. It's still checking, you know, 20 times a second, but it's not checking like 100 times a second. So it just slows it down just a touch. Um, it has no effect really on sensing the bump or not, but I think it's just good habit. If you're concerned, make it 10 milliseconds. Now you'll never know. Um, so there's our while. It sticks in this while loop until uh, the button is pressed, essentially. So while the button is not pressed, it sits here and waits. And it keeps checking. And then when it is pressed, this is when we're going to start a motor. So now we're going to start our motor. And speed of 50 is fine. And if I just leave it at this, it's going to start the motor then in my program right away. So let's listen for this and see what happens. You're probably thinking it's not going to even turn on. And that's my guess. Is it, might it might turn on, but it's going to be very, for a very short snippet. So again, it's waiting here. You can see the green arrow just waiting, waiting, waiting. Now when I push the button, so it didn't even, didn't even turn the motor on. Because by the time it was sending the signal to the motor, it's already ending the program. And it says don't send it anymore. So there's basically it's not sent long enough. 
So we're going to add a wait time in here um, just so we know that, that motor is kicked on. And we can just do a two second wait. And again, if you start a motor, um, don't just let the program end. Always stop the motor um, before it ends, just in case. You never want the motor to continue running just in case there's a glitch. So wait for two, stop. This is good, good programming. Uh, whenever you start something, you stop it before you just end the program. So let's try it now. So again, it's waiting. It's continuing to check. It's continuing to check, and that's doing that really quickly. So here we go. Button pressed. We're going to see it right here. Motor came on, and then it stopped and ended the program. So that is how you produce a start switch. I'm going to finish up my pseudocode here, and then we'll be good. That's BP6.